is mostly a 24 hour race. Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. We're at VMworld 2013. Joining me next on the whiteboard is Manish Apti. He's the product manager at SanDisk. Manish, thanks for joining us today. Uh, good to be back with you, George. One, one of the things we're seeing people look at uh, server-side caching as a way to get to uh, solid-state performance quickly. Sure. So uh, I know that you guys have been focused on making it easier to implement and, and, and work with. Can, can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, we have our ESX or VMware uh, caching product out there for a year. Okay. And we have been making um, we have been focused on making it very easy to deploy and license. Uh, so for example, let's say you have a three node cluster where okay. in a lot of cases you may have one of the nodes as a standby node and the other two nodes are active and what I mean by that is you're going to run most of your VMs on the two active nodes. Okay. And the third node is mainly to do maintenance or move VMs when you need to do some uh, hardware or software maintenance. Right. So in this case, our software deployment strategy is very simple. You don't necessarily have to have SSD on all the nodes just because they are in a cluster, okay. nor do we have to have our software installed for it to work. Okay. So for example, if you accelerate uh, uh, stuff or VMs on an active node, and if the VM moves to a standby node, it is fine. It may it will not perform as good as it was on an active node where our software is running, but we do not prevent it from going somewhere else so that it doesn't force you to buy unnecessary licenses. So in this environment then would I install could I install an SSD here and here and right. not, not on the standby? Right. So you let's say you installed an SSD because you know that that's where most of the VMs are going to run. We don't force you to buy a license or have to uh, buy an SSD for the node where it's not meant to run your day-to-day -day full active workloads. Right. So that makes okay. it easy in terms of licensing and your purchasing decisions. Okay. Right. And so then on, on that one, I would install the SSD here and the software here and right. then nothing here. Right. Okay. One of the other things we've been talking a lot about is how granular can you get, right? How, how does that work for you guys? Sure. Um, one of the unique things about our software is that we can accelerate individual VMDKs. Okay. And uh, that's kind of important because... Uh, you can either ac you can accelerate at different levels. You can accelerate the entire LUN. You can accelerate the entire VM, which means all the virtual disks. Okay. Or you can just accelerate individual virtual disks. But there is a difference between a virtual disk and a VMDK mm -hmm. because if you have snapshots, then a single virtual disk is actually made up of multiple VMDKs. Okay. And the reason why we chose to accelerate at a VMDK level is because in situations where you do not want to accelerate all the elements of a virtual disk which are part of a snapshot chain, mm -hmm. you have the granularity and flexibility of just choosing either the base of your chain or all the elements of the chain or everything except the base. Basically what that means is then if I've taken snapshots of a VM, I don't have to have those sna that snapshot data occupying cache. Right. Okay. And, and the reason why it is important is let's take a case of a link clone deployment, which is based on the sure. same snapshot chaining uh, principle. Mm -hmm. And let's say you have a base VMDK, right? Right. And that base VMDK is, is going to be uh, used as a basis for creating virtual desktops, for example. Mm -hmm. So when you create multiple instances of desktops, they're all derived from that base VMDK. Correct. Right? So these are the uh, desktop VMDKs, let's call them. Right mm -hmm. Now, because we uh, accelerate at an individual VMDK level, we give you the option to choose everything except the base. And one of the reasons why we decided to give that feature is because in v uh, VDI deployments, uh, the recommended practice is to put the base VMDK on a SSD-based VMFS data store, for example. Right. And the advantage of that is that this VMDK is going to be read whenever all the VMDK uh, sure. virtual desktops are running. Right. But with, with us, you can say, because it is already on an SSD, don't accelerate it, but only accelerate all the desktop-related VMDKs. Okay. And that gives you a finer control and a final granularity of what you accelerate, thereby focusing on making sure that the data that needs to be accelerated is there in the SSD and any unnecessary data is not in the SSD. One other thing we, we, uh, we've run into lately is some vendors, uh, when, when the host has to be rebooted or goes down for some reason, the whole caching process has to start all over again, which as you know, takes a little while to get those analytics going. Right. Uh, how do you guys handle that situation? So what is unique about our technology is it's a persistent cache. Okay. And the reason why it is persistent cache is uh, whatever metadata that any caching engine needs to keep track of where the data is in the caching device mm -hmm. is also saved in the caching device. Okay. And we do that on a regular basis using our own snapshotting technology. And uh, because of that, if a virtual machine powers off or a host reboots, our cache is still persistent. 
So what we try to do is we try to keep the contents of the cache live and active and reusable as much as possible, and we purge the cache only when it is absolutely required, such as when you do a V-motion to another node and come sure. back which right. is when you must purge the cache. Right. So we take a lot of effort in making sure that we don't purge the cache when it is not required, and we purge it when it is absolutely necessary. So in that example where <laughs> um, you said you had, we move a VM and comes back, and you, obviously you have to purge the cache in that mm -hmm. situation, can I, but can I just purge just that information, or do you have to purge the whole no, thing? No, we just purge the cache that is relevant to the VMDK that went out and came back oh, okay. in. So, so the rest good. of the VMDKs that are running on the same uh, host, mm -hmm. their cache is still warm and active. Okay, well that's good. That again, saves us the sure. that rebuild time. So then, let's finally let's talk about efficiency. Obviously, the the expensive part of the piece here is the uh, the, the SSD itself. So mm -hmm. the better we use that, right. The better uh, the better return on investment, right? Sure. And to that effect, uh, we are very good at understanding uh, the characteristics of the SSD. So what we do is we write to the SSD as a lock structured sequential regular uh, circular buffer. Okay. And what that means is that we are going to help improve the longevity of the SSD because we are writing it circular or a sequential manner and also it's going to give us better write performance and that ultimately improves the overall performance of the performance that we deliver to the application. Okay. Um, we also are very good in making sure that there is no static allocation of SSD space to individual VM DKs that are being accelerated and that makes it very useful for the uh, for the end user because VMDKs and VMs can go and in and out of host and the data that they occupy on their SSD is immediately reused for other VMDKs that are still active on that host. So well, we, we try to be very efficient in how we use the SSD. And, and how are other guys doing it that, that causes a problem? Is it because they're, they're, they have to set up like a partition for every single VM or right. something? Right. We have seen solutions where uh, you allocate a fixed amount of space for the object that you accelerate in the SSD, and when the object moves away, then it's kind of hard to reuse that space. Okay. Well, that's, that's really good uh, information, uh, Manish. I, I, I think that that can help people select uh, the right cache for their VMware environment. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. I'm George Crump, lead analyst for Storage Switzerland. Thank you for tuning in.